It's June of 2020. The pandemic is in full swing, and a group of content creators in Los Angeles have gotten together to film a video. This video is going to be their big comeback to YouTube when social distancing restrictions ease and it's socially acceptable to post group content again. These people have built massive followings vlogging, and among them are rising stars like Jeff Wittick, host of the popular Jeff's Barbershop podcast, and Corinna Kopf, Instagram Titan, along with many other internet personalities. They've found a shallow lake to spend the day at, but just hanging out by a lake isn't going to make for engaging content. To make things more interesting, they thought ahead and rented a construction excavator. They drove this excavator into the water and started using it to tow people on wakeboards, tubes, and anything else they could get their hands on. But after a little while, they wanted to push the envelope. What if someone just hung from a rope attached to the excavator and got spun around? Corinna was the first to give it a try, but the rope didn't seem very secure and she asked to be put back down on the ground. Next up, Jeff grabs the rope. The excavator driver spins Jeff faster, faster, much faster than Corinna got spun. And then, in an instant, there's an accident. Jeff was flung into the metal arm of the excavator at high speed. He's dangling limp from the rope, and the group doesn't even know if he's alive or not. As Jeff's friends rush from the shoreline to try to help him, the excavator operator and architect of the whole day's activities gets out of the machine. It's none other than David Dobrik. This is not YouTube drum. This is a criminal accusation with a victim. David doesn't want something on video. He tries to buy them out. Like, mm. instead of respecting their wishes, it's like, people say, I don't want this out there. David Dobrik is, a, and I know this video is gonna give me so much hate because everyone's up his butt, but they're gonna realize that something bad is gonna happen in that group. I don't know what it is. Something bad. And instead of respecting their wishes and, and understanding that it makes them uncomfortable, he turns it into a money thing. And money is power, right? That's influence. He's trying to influence them to do something they don't want to do. I thought that by us filming this video, it was just another fun, stupid vlog and that everything would be fine and nobody was harmed and I was wrong. I think the magnitude of the lies you've been spreading are unforgivable and you should face repercussion. David Dobrik has burned more bridges than most people have ever made. Him and his group of friends have been accused of horrendous things. He's had his whole channel demonetized, lost sponsors that most creators could only dream of having, and yet the views, subscribers, the money, all of it just keeps pouring in. What is actually going on? And where's the line between the David we see on camera and the one who always seems to be at the center of so much controversy? And most importantly, what makes David Dobrik uncancelable? Today, David has nearly 20 million subscribers on YouTube and still clears at least 5 million views per video on his main channel. He is one of the most popular mainstream YouTubers active today. And before all of his controversies, he had sponsorships from some of the biggest companies in the world. But it wasn't always like this. David got his start in social media posting content on Vine in 2013. Six second looping clips didn't turn out to be a sustainable business model for a social media company, but it did create some top tier content. Have you ever just felt like you're not going anywhere in life and like you're stuck in one spot? <laughs> Me too. In early 2015, David started posting videos on YouTube. He started out posting vlogs with some pre-planned skits and pranks in them and a recurring cast of many of David's friends from Vine. This format was massively successful and David's YouTube channel exploded in popularity, reaching a million subscribers by August of the next year. David's friend group that he filmed with continued to grow as well, and he even gave it a name, The Vlog Squad. As David's circle and audience grew, he felt the pressure to constantly push the envelope to make every video wilder than the last. This meant that going forward, there were two competing interests in David Dobrik's mind. David's hunger to please his audience and grow his brand with increasingly dangerous content on the one hand, and the safety and well-being of his friends on the other. Only the future could tell where David's priorities truly were. In early 2021, allegations about David and the vlog squad started surfacing. First, Nick Kiswani, aka Big Nick, went on the H3 podcast to talk about why he had left the vlog squad. He said the group had relentlessly made fun of him and his height damaging his mental health. In the interview, Nick painted a picture of an extremely toxic work environment. I was like, dude, why am I even like here? Like, what's the point of my existence? Because I was just treated like this, uh, like this uh punching bag right mm -hmm. like everyone's just 
uh, joking about me, like mocking me. Then the fans in public are doing the same. And like, I had a good long look in the mirror and like, I was like, wow, I'm like really depressed. Like, and that was kind of my um, signal to be like, all right, dude. Like I, I realized right then and there, like followers, fame, money, none of this stuff is worth it if I'm getting to the point where like I don't even want to live. Nick's interview did more than shed light on the vlog squad's inner workings. It also emboldened other people who had been in the group to come forward with the stories of their own. Just one week after Big Nick went on the H3 podcast, another member would join to retell his own experiences in the group. Seth Francois had been a core member of David's group for a long time, but mysteriously stopped appearing in David's videos. He finally got to explain what happened the fateful night that he felt David betrayed him. And I get into the room. David, he's a very convincing person. He was very calm and, and everything seemed normal. And he was just like, yeah, you know, like we just have this scene, you know, like I wanted to do, I want you to like make out with Corinna. And, um, you know, like, are you cool with that? And I was just like, yeah, no, I'm fine with making out with Corinna. Like, that's fine. I don't understand exactly what this bit's for, but I'm just trying to basically just get it over with so I can, you know, go home and get some rest. And then, um, you know, during the video, we kind of start the make out, starts going, and then it's going on for a, a decent period of time. And then after Jason pulls off his mask, and I realized that, you know, I just was touched by someone that, you know, I did not, you know, consent to having their their tongue. Seth had been tricked into kissing someone he did not consent to as part of one of David's pranks. And if that wasn't bad enough, viewers of the H3 podcast quickly dug up some very incriminating clips of David talking about the incident. And then Seth finally lets up after 25 seconds of making out with Jason and he sees Corinna and he just f***ing loses it. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was it great. It was my favorite you can't, thing. You can't fake that, you know. It it's, was just it wouldn't be something you could ever fake. It was so perfect and I feel so bad and it's just it's it's awful because poor guy had to go through that and his friends are probably <laughs> going to chew him out for that for the next like 3 5 years of his life. <laughs> well, as Seth tells it, the uh, homosexuality is not so accepted in his where he comes from. <laughs> Seth's from Compton. Dudes kissing dudes is not so accepted. Seth's from Compton, so it's like the perfect like At least straight dudes kissing it's straight dudes. Literally the perfect setup. This interview on the H3 podcast sparked a fair amount of backlash towards David. But in addition to people calling for accountability, it also drew out David's supporters coming to his defense. One of these people was Scotty Sire, a member of the vlog squad who posted a video just a couple weeks after Seth went on the H3 podcast. So a lot of the things that Seth was in were his ideas. I'm not saying that these kissing pranks were his ideas, but he did give consent to them and he partook in them. He partook in several bits after and before the next ones and was totally fine with it. Like I'd, I'd never heard a word from him about being uncomfortable. When you were partaking in it, I know that you were just filming videos for David's channel and probably hoping that it built up your social media platform and you built a career out of it. And I don't think that that worked. And I think you got bitter about it. And after a couple of years, you were like, I, I want something out of this. I was embarrassed in that prank and I want something out of it. So I'm going to go after them. I think the magnitude of the lies you've been spreading are unforgivable and you should face repercussions. Scotty's video was not received positively by the internet at large, as it seemed he was blaming the victim. Just four days after posting this video, Scotty deleted it and posted an apology on his social media. But instead of apologizing to Seth directly, he apologized to anyone who feels as though I disrespected or invalidated their story, going on to say that he chose his words poorly. This reads like an apology from someone who still stands by what they said. And even if David's inner circle was staying loyal to him, some fans started to revolt. Volt. David's photography app, Dispo, began to be flooded with negative reviews. Little did David know this was only the tip of the iceberg. Everyone was about to see how fast his past could catch up with him and just how massive the iceberg really was. On March 16th, 2021, just about a month after the Seth Francois interview, Insider published an interview with a woman who claimed to be a victim of David's content. The headline of the article read, a woman featured on YouTube star David Dobrik's channel says she was by a vlog squad member in 2018, the night they filmed a video about groups. 
The woman's full name was redacted to protect her identity in the article, and she was simply referred to as Hannah. Hannah told Insider that some of her friends had been talking with a member of the vlog squad, Dirty Dom, in his Instagram DMs. He told them he wanted to hook up with them and that they should come over later that night. The premise of the video David was filming was for Dirty Dom to have a fivesome, but Hannah told Insider that she never intended to do that. She said when they arrived, the vlog squad got them alcohol even though Hannah was underage. They encouraged her to drink to the point that she was not fully coherent and articulate, and and then Dom brought her back to his bedroom and forced himself on her. This allegation was a bombshell for David and his group, and he had already taken the video down prior to the story breaking. The content management company Collab DRM also appeared to be blocking re-uploads of the video for David. Even still, there are copies of this video floating around the internet, which show Jeff Wittick, David, and other members of the vlog squad opening the door and peeking into Dom's room while Hannah and her friend were in there with Dom, presumably without the women's consent. This video had over 5 million views before it was taken down, and David didn't seem to have a problem with the video prior to this. But on the very same day the Insider article was published, David posted a short apology video on one of his alternate channels. And with, with people in my life that I don't film with anymore, um, like Dom and you know the other people that I no longer film with, I, I chose to distance myself because I don't align with some of the actions and I don't I don't stand for any kind of misconduct and I I'm I was just I've been really disappointed by some of my friends and for that reason I've separated from a lot of them. Um I think with any video I make my main purpose is to make people happy and and inspire people and I just I never want anything to get in the way of that and I'm sorry if I've let you down and Things like that won't happen again. But for David to say that his friends let him down didn't really make a lot of sense when he was the one there with him, egging them on, holding a camera, and making them famous. This apology seemed like far too little, and David didn't really take responsibility for what happened in his videos. But no one was able to tell him so since he had disabled likes, dislikes, and comments, ironically on a video titled, Let's Talk. Over the next six days, David felt backlash like he never had before. He stepped down from the board of directors of his photography app, Dispo, and lost a monumental amount of sponsors. On the 18th, David uploaded another apology video. I want to start this video off by saying I fully believe the woman who came out against Dom and said she was by him. Um, as it was reported, the next day, I got consent to post the video. Even though I got the consent to post that video, I should have never posted it. And I, what I understand now, and I didn't understand before, is that she sent that text because she felt like she had to, not because she wanted to. And that's f***ed up, and I'm sorry. When she later reached out a couple months later to take the video down, I immediately took it down. And I want to apologize to her and her friends for ever putting them in an environment that I enabled that made them feel like their safety and values were compromised. I'm so sorry. I was completely disconnected from the fact that when people were invited to film videos with us, especially videos that relied on shock for views or whatever it was, that I was creating an unfair power dynamic. I did not know this before. It was completely wrong and I wish I was more responsible and I wish I was more aware at the time and, I, and I'm so sorry I missed that. I didn't know what was going on in that room and I should have been. I should have been there and I should have been making sure that everybody involved was was taken care of and wasn't uncomfortable. But David saying he didn't know what was going on in that room and should have been there doesn't make any sense, as he's literally behind the camera while Jeff Wittick peeks through the door, and we can hear David's trademark laugh. You need to get in there and do a head count for the vlog. Okay, yeah, okay, all right. We got, we got three in there. <laughs> after this second apology, David's fans went after Dom. Dom would go on to release a statement on his Instagram about a month later, where he apologized to the women involved, but said that as far as he was concerned, everything that happened that night was completely consensual. Saying that his character was being unfairly attacked, and that the statements were unfairly demeaning and assaulting his character and reputation. Going on to say that he donated several thousand dollars to women's rights groups. This apology was not received well, but Dom's part in this story was far from over. The next month in April, one of David's closest friends and members of the vlog squad decided to drop his own story about David after keeping it hidden and secret for nearly an entire year. 
Jeff Wittick released a five-part series on his YouTube channel detailing a gruesome injury he had suffered at the hands of David. Back in June of 2020, Jeff had made an Instagram post saying that he broke his face. The nature of his injuries was a closely guarded secret, and many thought he was faking it. But now it was time to come clean. David and the vlog squad had gone to a lake in the summer of 2020 to shoot a big comeback video for after the pandemic. David rented an excavator so they could tow people and do stunts. But what happened next would change Jeff's life forever. I just jumped out of a plane 20 times. What's the worst that could happen if I swing from a rope over a one foot deep lake? And yeah, I didn't know I was going to go that fast. So I grabbed the rope and I tried to make a goddamn funny video for people. But this is where I made a mistake. I forgot that the biggest idiot I know was driving it. Oh shit. Oh shit. Jeff went on to show that David had come to visit him in the hospital and had paid for his medical bills. But after that, he hadn't contacted Jeff at all to check up on him. Jeff ended up needing nine surgeries on his eye, face, and head to keep his eye. And his doctor told him that if he had hit the excavator just a couple inches the other direction, he would be dead. Most people start their day, they look at their phone, and the first Instagram story would be him. And I would click on it and it would be him being praised for something that he accomplished that week. And I'm sitting here in my house in the worst place I've ever been, thinking I'm never gonna get back to where I was at. It made me resent him, it made me resent seeing his face, it made me not wanna go online, it made me not wanna open up YouTube. It would just put me in a bad place. Like I'm healed enough to walk around, but I'm still really fed up. Even though Jeff wasn't happy with what David had done to him and wasn't happy with how David had handled the situation afterwards, he still tried to make amends in this series, asking David to skydive with him because he wanted David to feel the fear and helplessness that he had made Jeff feel. Jeff finished his series and moved on for a time. Five months later in December, Dom would make one last attempt to clear his name. He uploaded a video to his YouTube channel called Exposing the Truth, and another one of David's friends, Cassandra, was also in the video with Dom. Dom showed screenshots of what he says are messages from Hannah the day after the incident. Her first message says, I know I was very drunk, but I was having a blast and hope you did too. Also, anything at your discretion is okay for the vlog, just maybe not anything a future employer could use against me. And then Dom shows that they kept messaging back and forth for a little bit. But after a few months, Dom Dom says something changed. Then a few months later in February, I get a text from Hannah basically saying that, you know, she wants to have the video taken down. Um, she doesn't like it being up. So I take screenshots of the conversation I had with her, the whole conversation, and I send it to David and he tells me how to reply to Hannah. I have someone here that was there that day that David received those texts for me and basically told me how to reply. Hi guys. Um... My name is Cassandra and I met David in 2017. In February 2019, David received the text from Dom. And when David received the text from Dom, David did not want to take the video down. In the room, it was Jason, Natalie, and David. I decided to contact a friend of mine that is a lawyer and she advised that the video, like my instinct reaction was to take the video down. Reaction to Dom's video was mixed and there's a fair amount of negative comments on the video. Then in November, two more women came forward with allegations against Dom. Despite building up a YouTube channel with over 800,000 subscribers, it's not likely Dom will reach the level of mainstream success he enjoyed while working with David ever again, as long as these allegations keep following him and new ones continue to pop up. Then in February of 2022, something changed with Jeff. Maybe not a quick overnight change, but a slow simmering over of resentment towards David seems to have finally boiled over. In a video to his fans, Jeff was asked if David had checked up on him. Nope, not a text or nothing. Uh, not surprised, you know, it is what it is, but I'm done being fake friends with that mom. This clip has ignited a new wave of talk about David Dobrik and how he handles his controversies. David recently gave a comment on the situation on his Views podcast. That day uh, is like the worst, the worst thing that's ever happened to me and I wish I could I would do anything to take that day back. Jeff responded on his own podcast with an ominous message. I'm not going to beat you up anymore. I'm just going to take this the right way, the smart way and just let the courts decide, you know? 
you're making a lot of statements here that are very untrue that are so easy to disprove so let's just let the courts decide and then you'll have to sign a paper that says yeah this was a lie and I'm guilty of this and this and that and we could go that route about it because let's be honest I get no points for beating you up so it seems the issue with Jeff is far from resolved and only time will tell how this part of David's career will turn out which brings us to the current day. As I was making this video in the spring of 2022, Casey Neistat, famous vlogger turned filmmaker, screened a documentary he's been working on about David. It was a private screening and there are no copies available on the internet. But Casey has hinted that David might not be pleased with how it came out. If Casey is able to get a deal with a large streaming company like Netflix, millions of people might get a look at just how much of the David Dobrik iceberg is still hidden to the world. Until then, David will most likely keep issuing apologies, creating content, and delivering what his millions of fans want from him. More videos. And for the time being, that is what makes David Dobrik uncancelable. If you enjoyed this video, you'll probably also really like my video on Mr. Beast and the controversies he's had during his YouTube career. There's more to that story than you might think. Drop me a follow on Twitter if you want to keep up with me. For instance, if you are curious on why I disappeared from the internet for about a month, at JabroniTV. And as always, thanks for watching. Stay weird, internet. Peace.